Amen. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I'm Pastor Jarrell Cummings, and I'm so thankful for you tuning in tonight to service. We're going to have a great time tonight. I'm thankful that we get to jump on together no matter where you're watching from, no matter how you're watching. I'm just glad you're watching, whether on your iPhone, your, uh, your, your uh, tablet, uh, whether you're on a TV screen somewhere, I'm just thankful that we get to come together from around the country um, and we get to come together and we get to have a Bible study tonight. And so I'm thankful for you. I love you. You're in my thoughts and you're in my prayers. And I trust that it is well with you and your family in Jesus name. Even if it doesn't look well, declare that it is well. Declare that all is well. Not just some things, but that all things are well. So I pray your week is going well. That is my earnest expectation. That is my hope. And that is what I believe where you and your house are concerned. And why don't you agree with me? The Bible says quickly agree. The Bible says if two of us will agree, it will be done. And so I'm your, uh, your tag team partner. I'm your faith partner. And I believe together we'll get it done. So again, a big thank you for all of you who are watching. Maybe you're watching the first for the first time. I'm Jarrell Cummings, the pastor of the Freedom Center right here in beautiful Wesley Chapel, Florida, just north of Tampa. And if you're ever in the Tampa area or if you live in Tampa or in the Wesley Chapel, New Tampa area, come out and visit us. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. in Wiregrass Elementary, and we would love for you and your family to be a part of our services. We have a wonderful kids church, Freedom Kids, where your children will be taught the Word of God and grow up in an environment where they can learn how to win, thrive, and overcome in life. And of course, you yourself will be taught the Word of God in a way that it will uh, change your life and rearrange the landscape of your life. So I love you so much. I'm so thankful for those of you who are tuning in. Why don't you let me know your name and where you're watching from? whether you're watching us live right now, or whether you're watching us later on, on YouTube, later on, uh, uh, you know, in your own time, go ahead and let us know right there on YouTube, right there on Facebook. Go ahead and let us know your name and where you're tuning in from. And let us know how this ministry is being a blessing to you and to your family, because we trust that it is. Amen, 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 and amen. Praise God. <clears throat> All right, so what we want to do tonight is we want to jump right into this tonight. I don't want to hold you long, but I do want to give you something that I think will be beneficial for you going forward. On our, on our Wednesday nights, we've been talking about faith, and we've spent two weeks talking about uh, taking a step of faith, and we studied the life of Joshua, and God told Joshua, wherever you put your feet, I will give you the land. And the same is true for you. When God told Joshua, God is saying to you, wherever you take a step of faith, I will give it to you. Maybe it's in your marriage, career, relationships. Maybe it's in your health. Maybe it's starting a new business. Whatever it is, take a step of faith and God promises that I'll back you. I'll give it to you. Wherever you put your foot on, that land I'll give you. So watch where you're stepping. Don't play it safe. Play it faith. <laughs> Amen. Take a step of faith and watch God come through for you. Amen. And then last week, we began to look at faith works by love. And we said, you know, it's one thing to know that God wants me to take a step of faith, but sometimes it can be intimidating. It can be daunting to say, hey, listen, I'm going to take a step of faith. I'm going to go out and do something that I haven't done before. Well, where do you find the courage to do that? Well, it's the love of God. The Bible says that faith works by love. So how do we take a step of faith? We take a step of faith by knowing that God loves us. And this is what God told Joshua, I'm with you. Do you know when you're with someone, it's because you love them? When you spend all your time with someone, when you never leave someone, when you never forsake someone, it's because you love them. And so God told Joshua, be strong, be courageous. I'm with you. And wherever you step, I'm going to give it to you. What encourages us? What inspires courage and boldness? What gives us the motivation to take a step of faith even when giants are in front of us, it's God's love. It's the fact that we know he's with us. And the New Testament says in Galatians 5, 6, that faith works by love. 
Love deals with all of our fears. Love gives us the motivation to go forward. How can I fail knowing that my father, the God of the universe, who holds all power and he's on my side? How could I fail if he loves me? And the truth is, child of God, he does love you. So wherever you take a step of faith, know that love never fails. And that's why God will back you. He will bring it to pass and he will honor his word where your life is concerned. Maybe you're dealing with some fears today, anxiety, intimidation. I understand. Believe me. But here's what I'll say to you. Spend time meditating, thinking on, looking at scriptures that tell you how loved you are of your father, that show you Jesus' love for you. Look at scriptures that comfort your heart, that show you that he's a healer. Let's say you're dealing with a sickness or a disease and you have a negative report from the doctor, or maybe you don't have a negative report from the doctor, but it's just an uncomfortable sickness in your body, back pain, knee pain, migraines, insomnia, uh, arthritis. It's not life threatening, but it is uh, in a sense hindering your life. Well, how do you overcome that? The love of God. When you look at scriptures, Jesus, you know, if you were just to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and watch Jesus earthly ministry and watch how he went all through uh, the towns and the villages preaching the gospel and healing all who were sick. Well, if the Lord did that for those people and they were not even saved because Jesus hadn't died yet, he hadn't shed his blood for anyone yet. And yet he was doing that for them. And the Bible tells you that he is the same. Jesus, that is is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Of course you know that he'll heal you. How would he, being present with you, see you in your situation and not have already provided a cure for it? And so when you know God loves you, when you understand that you're loved by the Lord, you'll see these things start to fall by the wayside. I'm not saying that things won't come against you. We're never preaching that. The Bible doesn't say that. In fact, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's who you and I are. If our faith is in Jesus, we are the righteousness of God. Not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus has done, and we put our faith in it. Righteousness in the New Testament is a gift to be received by faith. It's not something to be earned or worked for. And so the Bible says that we will encounter things if we're righteous. But it goes on to say, the Lord delivers us from them all. You see, when you know that God loves you, we're not saying that you're not going to encounter things. We're not saying that you're not going to get a negative report. The Bible even promises that a weapon will form, but it will not prosper. So maybe there's a weapon that has formed in your life against your health, against your finances, against your family. I don't know where the weapons are being formed. God never promised that a weapon wouldn't be formed. He promised that it wouldn't prosper. So I need you to go ahead and say this with me and let the devil hear you. Say, no weapon that is formed against me, my physical health, my mental health, my family, my relationships, or my finances, my career, no weapon formed will ever prosper against me. Hallelujah. Amen. And so God never promised us that the weapon wouldn't form. He did promise that it wouldn't prosper. So here's what you need to know, child of God. Even though that weapon is formed, even though the doctor sees a negative report, the marriage may not be going exactly as you thought. There may be some things going on in your job. Doors may have closed in your career. Maybe the money seems a little tight. Maybe you're dealing with pressure, stress, anxiety. Listen to me. Hear me today. Even though the weapon has formed, it will not prosper. Even though the affliction comes, God will deliver. Jesus said, be of good cheer. In this world, you will encounter problems. You will encounter tribulation. You're going to face things, but be of good cheer. Don't ever let the devil steal your joy. Keep a smile on your face and a pep in your step and let your head be held high. Put your shoulders back because God is for you. 
And if God be for you, Romans chapter eight, nothing can be against you and nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so this is what fuels faith. The love of God fuels faith. And that's what we looked at last week. Now tonight, I want to take a few minutes and I want to talk to you about faith and patience. Faith and patience. Now this is a very, very important piece to the puzzle because if your faith is going to work, yes, you have to do the first two things that we talked about. You got to take a step of faith. You got to be bold enough to go for it. And if you do, God gives it to you. Second, you got to know God loves you. That's the only way you're going to be able to take that step because we're intimidated by a lot of things. We get nervous. We get fearful. Well, what calms our fears? The love of God removes fear. First John chapter four, verse 19. So you got to have those things in place. But then here's the next thing you got to have. I need you to hear me because this could be the most important piece to the puzzle. But you have to have patience. Now, when I say patience, many people, even Christians, they hear toleration. That's how we use the word patience today. Like if you're in traffic or if you're waiting on a long line at the supermarket and you're in a rush, what do you try to do? You try to what? Be patient. Well, what are you saying? In essence, you're saying, well, just kind of tolerate this. The line is, you know, you're next. Just, just kind of tolerate this. But when the Bible uses the word patience, it's actually not talking about toleration at all. But it's referring to endurance. Endurance. When the Bible uses patience, it's endurance. When I say patience, I want you to say endurance. Patience. Yeah, I heard some of you. Let's try it again. Patience. All right. Now, when I say endurance, you say patience, endurance. Yeah, I heard you one more time. Endurance. Now you say patience. So patience, when you think patience, the Bible is talking about endurance. What we would say, uh, the ability to stick with it, you know, stick to itiveness, so to speak. And that's what the Bible refers to when it talks about patience. Now, if you're going to see anything happen in your life, as far as receiving from God is concerned, you have to understand these two elements, faith and patience. These are the power twins. This is what causes us to receive the promises of God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, he says, I don't want you to be slothful, but I want you to be followers of them who through faith and patience. These two. Watch what happens when you have these two operative in your life. They inherit promises. How many of you could, how many of you can, uh, can, could, could use some of the promises of God manifesting in your life? How many of you would love to start inheriting your inheritance? How many of you would like to start possessing your possessions? How many of you would like to start receiving promises for every problem? If you're dealing with a health issue, you have a promise of healing. If you're dealing with a financial issue, you have a promise of, of uh, provision, prosperity, providence. If you're dealing with a mental issue, you have a promise of peace. If you're dealing with loneliness, you have a promise that it's not good for a man to be alone. That God will send you a good mate. See, for every problem, there is a promise. But how do we receive those promises? How do we inherit those promises? How do we possess our possessions? Well, the Bible says, according to Hebrews 6 and 12, it only takes two. Faith, you got to have faith. That's belief, confidence in God. But here's the, the, the thing that makes faith work. Patience. Patience are like the wheels to your faith. It's what keeps your faith going. It's what keeps your faith going. It's what keeps your faith out on the field long enough to win the game. And that's what patience is. In other words, let's say you're dealing with, you know, a financial issue or a health issue. And you see God's promise that you're healed that he will take sickness from your midst, Deuteronomy 7, verse 15. 
Exodus 23, 25, that he'll take sickness from your body. Uh, uh, um, you know, Exodus 15, 26, I'm the Lord who heals you. All the scriptures, Isaiah 53, 5, that by his stripes you were healed. First Peter 2, 24, Matthew 8, 17, all the scriptures that talk about you being healthy. Psalm 103, verse 1, he heals all your sicknesses and all your diseases. All of these verses that talk about your healing. Psalm 91, uh, no plague will come nigh your dwelling. All of these promises belong to you. But now what do you do if a sickness comes on you and you're believing that promise? Well, you might not see something change at first. And what the devil does is he tries to manipulate things. See, he's the God, lowercase g, of this world. So he can do certain things in this world to manipulate and make you believe that your faith isn't working. But if you'll keep the devil in the realm of faith, if you'll keep the devil in the place of faith, he can only work and, and try to manipulate what you're feeling, what you see, what you can experience. But if you'll hold him to the truth of God's word and say, nope, Satan, the word says that I'm healed and I'm not letting go of it. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. If you'll do that and you'll stick with it, what the Bible calls patience. Don't change your confession. Even if you're, you see the blood pressure spiking up, you see the heart still beating out of rhythm. The pain is still in the back. The migraines are still coming. The insomnia is still working at night. You're not able to sleep. It doesn't matter if you'll just continue to stick with the word every day. Don't change your confession. Just keep saying that I'm healed. I'm well. My body is strong. Jesus said in Mark 11:23 23 that you will have what you are saying. What the devil wants to do is he wants to bring so much pressure on you and tell you, look, it's not working. Your healing isn't coming. You're getting worse by the day. Look, the financial situation isn't changing. Your car just broke down. Oh, look, the baby needs a pair of shoes. Back to school is right around the corner. You don't have enough to make two ends meet. You stick with the word. No, no, no. I'm blessed. God is prospering me. We are prosperous. My God is a provider. You stick with the word. You don't change your confession. And if you'll do that, it's not enough just to have faith. Hear me very closely, please. If you can get anything from tonight, hear me. It's not enough just to have faith. You have to have patience. You have to be able to stick with your faith when it looks like nothing is happening. You say, well, pastor, what do you mean? Real simple. Do you remember Naaman? He was the man from the Old Testament. He was a king. Uh, excuse me. He was the king's general. Uh, for the nation of Syria. And so he had leprosy, a skin condition that many times killed people. It was considered a death sentence. It was like our cancer today. If you got that, it was basically done for you. You were outlawed socially. You were not allowed to be in the public. And of course, your body, if you had a, a bad condition, uh, parts of your body would literally uh, begin to fall off. Your body, it's you know autoimmune, so it would start eating itself away. Well, this man had leprosy and he had a little servant girl or his wife rather had a little servant girl who was from Israel. And she told Naaman, she said, you know what? If your husband would go to Israel, there is a prophet. His name is Elijah and Elijah would get your husband healed. So his wife being a smart wife, like all of you know, our wives, thank God for our wives, right, brothers? So his wife told Naaman what to do and Naaman listened and he went down to Israel and he went to go see Elijah. And so Elijah told him, he said, I want you to go dip. Listen to me, church. Hear me real, cl real clear. He said, I want you to go dip seven times. Everybody shout seven. He said, I want you to dip seven times in the river Jordan. And on the seventh time, when you come up, your flesh will be totally restored. That sickness will leave you. Well, what if Naaman would have dipped four times? Would he have seen the leprosy leave? What if he dipped five times and he came out of the water, the river Jordan, he looked at his skin and the condition was still there? How about on the sixth time when he dipped in the water, came out of river Jordan, and he saw that the skin condition hadn't left his body? You know the devil told him, you're wasting your time. Nothing is happening. You're dipping and dipping and dipping. Surely nothing's going to take place seven times. <laughs> What happened on six, the sixth time? What happened on the fifth time? The devil was in his ear, just like he's in our ears. 
What would have happened if he didn't dip a seventh time? Let me say it another way. What would have happened if he didn't endure? If he didn't mix patience with his faith? He wouldn't have been healed. See, not every time does it happen on the first time, the second time, the fifth or the sixth. Sometimes it takes a little bit of endurance. Sometimes we have to be willing to keep going. And I'm telling you, child of God, your faith, I know you have faith. I know you trust God. You've made it this far. You're standing here today because of your faith. What I'm asking you to do is don't quit. Don't give up. Don't cave in. Just dip a seventh time. Don't let the devil talk you out on time number six. Don't let him talk you out on the fifth time. But I'm asking you to dip seven times. What am I saying? Mix endurance, mix patience with your faith. Believing God is good, but sometimes on dip number one, nothing happens. Dip number two, nothing takes place. We need to do it seven times. Stick with it. Keep saying you're healed. Keep saying my God is a provider. Keep declaring the blessing over your children. Yes, I know they're coming home. They smell like reefer. They might be hanging with the wrong people in college. They might be doing some of the wrong things. Your husband not, might, might not be doing everything right. Keep confessing my marriage is blessed. My children are prosperous. Yes, you might be head over heels in debt. You don't have enough money to pay your bills. Keep confessing. I'm prosperous. I'm a lender, not a borrower. I'm blessed and not cursed. I'm the head, not the tail. You might be confused in your mind. You not, might not know what to do. You might feel depression coming in on you at night. Begin to just say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The peace of God keeps me in perfect peace. God is with me and therefore it is well with me in my house. Don't let the devil keep you from dipping a seventh time. Let's use another example. What about Joshua? You remember when God told them, the promised land is yours, but here's what I want you to do. When you enter the first city, Jericho, I want you to march around the walls seven times for seven days. What would have happened if on day number three, they marched around the walls, they didn't see anything happen. And the people began to say, well, nothing's going on. Nothing's happening. God told them, don't even open your mouth. If you read the account, the story, God says, don't say a word. See, sometimes God just wants us to keep acting on our faith. Don't talk yourself out of it. Don't use your mouth to hurt yourself. Don't trap yourself with your own words. Speak positively. Speak good things. I know it's tempting to say, oh man, it's not working. Oh man, what are we going to do? We've got bills due. Oh man, what are we going to do? It looks like this sickness is never going to turn around. Look at our child. Look at what's going on. It's getting worse. I know it's tempting to speak negative. Don't do it. Watch your tongue. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. So God told Israel, he said, when you walk around these walls, he told Joshua, he said, tell the people, don't say one word. Just keep marching. Keep what? Walking by faith. Keep sticking with the word. Keep speaking the blessings of God. And finally, they marched day number one. Nothing happened. They marched day number two. Nothing took place. They marched day number three. Nothing happened. Four, five, six. Finally, on the seventh day, they marched. And on the seventh day, God told them, he said, I want you to march around these walls seven times. And when they marched around those walls on the seventh time, he said, I want you to let out a shout now. And when they shouted, those walls came coming down. Here's what I want you to see. Nothing took place on day number one, yet they marched. Nothing took place day number two, yet they marched. Even day number seven, nothing happened until they marched around those walls seven times. Someone says, what is that? Patience. It's endurance. You've got to be willing to keep marching. Don't stop. I don't care what the devil is doing. I don't care what the devil is throwing at you. Don't stop. Keep going around your walls. Keep marching around the area that Satan is trying to keep from you. Maybe he's built a wall around your health. 
Keep marching around that wall confessing that I'm healed. Keep taking steps of faith. Keep trusting and believing that you're loved by God. Keep marching around that financial situation. Maybe the devil has put a wall up around your career and you're trying to get a promotion. You're trying to go through the doors, but there's a wall around it. It seems like you can't press through. You can't break through. The devil wants you to quit marching. He wants you to stop. He wants you to give up. He wants you to speak the wrong thing. He wants you to curse yourself. Listen to me. Speak blessing. Don't stop marching. Don't stop speaking the word of God. Don't stop going around it. You know what's going to happen? The wall that he has erected to keep you out. Hear me, child of God. Oh my God, hear me. It's getting ready to come down. The Bible says, Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Gates are meant to keep you from coming in. Gates are meant to keep people out. That's what gates are for. You know the devil is terrified of you and he's erecting gates around your health, around your relationships, around your marriage, around your career. He's trying to erect gates, walls to keep you out of all that God has for you. But hear me right now. If you will keep marching, if you will keep walking by faith, don't back down. Don't get intimidated. Don't turn away and say it's not working. Oh, the word of God must not be so. You keep walking by faith. You keep speaking the promises of God. You keep speaking the blessings of God over you, your family, over your career. You keep declaring that I'm the head, not the tail, that I have the wisdom of God, the favor of God. Promotion comes from the Lord. If you're believing for promotion, I sense in my heart that there are people believing for promotion. They're believing to go further in life. Maybe it's in your career. Maybe it's a business, maybe an opportunity that you're a little nervous about taking. I sense in my heart that there's promotion in the name of Jesus and the devil is trying to erect walls to keep you in your place where you've been for five, six, seven years. But now you're wanting to go further. You're wanting to experience more in your health, in your finances, in your family. You're wanting to go further and he's trying to erect walls to keep you from that place. And he tells you it's not working. Look, you went for the promotion. It didn't work. You tried to start the business and you fell flat on your face. You tried to step out and start dating again, again and look at what happened. Trust me and hear me right now. If you'll just keep walking by faith, if you'll just keep going, Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against you, but you have to keep marching toward the gate. Don't back down. Don't get afraid. Don't turn loose. Keep trusting God. Keep adding patience, endurance to your faith. Don't quit. Can I pray with you? I'm going to pray with you that God would help you to keep going. Maybe you feel like quitting tonight. Maybe you feel like nothing has worked. I've tried what you're saying, Pastor. I've done it and nothing has worked. What if Naaman did that? What if he said, I dipped six times and nothing happened to my skin? What if Joshua said, I've marched around this city for six days and nothing has happened? Child of God, listen to me. There's a seventh day in your future. There's a seventh dip out in front of you. Don't let the devil, devil rob you of the blessings of God, of God's best. Don't let the devil tell you it's not working. You know, whenever the devil talks, it's because you're close. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? Everything the devil says is a lie. Whenever he talks, he's lying. So if he tells you it's not working, guess what? It is working. If he tells you nothing is happening, guess what? Something's happening. If he tells you you're going to die, I've got you now. This sickness is incurable. Guess what? You're going to live. If he tells you you're poor and nothing's going to work, you'll never be married. You'll never be happy again. Guess what? You're getting ready to be happy again. Anything he says, Jesus said, that he is a liar and the father of it. So whatever he says is not the truth. Just make it opposite and that's the truth. If he says you're sick, you're healed. <laughs> if he says you're gonna die, you're gonna live. If he says you never will be happy again, you're getting ready to have the best days of your life out in front of you. If he says you're a loser, you're a winner. Just take whatever he's saying and turn it around. That's the truth about it because he's a liar. Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm gonna pray with you tonight and we're going to believe God that if you're tempted to quit, you're going to keep going. 
and you're going to dip a seventh time. You're going to march around the walls a seventh time. You're going to see this, this thing that he's erected to keep you out of the goodness of God come down in your life. Can we agree for God to strengthen you? Now, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Facebook, I want you to cooperate with me. I'm asking you, please, to take a step of faith. I'm asking you to just simply say, pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. And the Bible says, so, you know, people say, well, why do you do that? Because Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, he said, if two of you agree on earth regarding anything they ask, it'll be done. But we have to be what? In agreement. You know, in our family series, we've been talking about what? Agreement, being one. There is power. That's where God commands his blessing. So I'm going to ask now that we use our chat. Our chat is going to be our place of agreement. It's where we hold hands together. It's where we agree. It's where you and I trust God together. And we're going to use our chat to do this. And we're going to ask God to help us to keep going, not to quit, but to dip a seventh time like Naaman did and see our healing to march around the walls a seventh time like Joshua did and see the promises of God, the land, the abundant life that God had for us come to pass. Can we agree together? Simply write in and say, Pastor, pray with me. Pray for me and my family. And God hears it. God sees it. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and just trust me, please. Don't say, no, I'm just going to watch through the window. You know, someone says, what does it mean to watch through the window? You're watching, but you don't cooperate. Don't do that. Come in through the front door. Window watchers are peeping toms. Don't do that. Come in through the front door. Write in and say, pray for me. Heaven sees it. That's a step of faith. That's obedience. It's cooperation. It's uh, submitting to God's way of doing things. Let's agree together. Amen. And let's I want to pray for you so badly. And we're going to see strength come into your inner man. And you're going to keep going. So that the promises of God start coming to pass in your life. We don't have a faith issue, but sometimes we feel like what? Quitting. Let's trust God to keep going, to take one more step of faith, one more dip in Rivers Jordan, one more walk around those walls so that we can see God's blessings come to pass in our lives. Amen. I see you right in. I see you coming in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Yara, I see you. Belinda, I see you. How you doing? Uh, Lauren, how you doing? I see you. Lisa, Keith, how you doing, big dog? Michelle, I see you. Melissa, how you doing? Stacy, I see you. Uh, uh, Nathan, I see you. Amen. Praise God. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's a good thing. So I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I lift up these, my brothers and my sisters who are watching live and who will watch this later on. I pray for all of them, Father, who are desiring to be strengthened with might by your spirit in the inner man. I'm praying for all of these, my brothers and sisters who are watching on YouTube later on, who are watching on Facebook right now. Father, we see in your word, Hebrews 6, 12 says that faith and patience is what causes us to inherit the promises. We believe you, Father. Faith is in our issue. But sometimes the devil is trying to do everything he can to make us quit. Father, we trust you right now to strengthen us. We trust you right now to give us renewed strength, to keep going, to endure, not to quit, to dip a seventh time like Naaman did so we can see your promises come to pass, to march around those walls a seventh time so we can see your blessings and your goodness flow into our lives. So right now, I just agree with my brothers and I speak strength. In fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say I'm strong right now. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. If you feel weak, if you feel like you're getting ready to quit, I want you to say right now, I'm strong in the name of Jesus. Don't forget to add Jesus. That's where the power is. In Jesus name, I have strength. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, surely shall one say in the Lord have I strength. Say it now. Say I have strength in the name of the Lord Jesus. I have patience. I have faith. And I'm receiving, I'm inheriting all the promises of God, all the blessings of God. I'm possessing my possessions. Hallelujah. So I speak over you right now that you're possessing your possessions, that all the promises of God are flowing in your life. I speak over you right now that you have strength to go one more day, to dip a seventh time, to march around those walls a seventh day. I declare that the blessings of God are overwhelming you and your family because you are patient. You are enduring. You stick with it and you don't quit. There is no quit in you. We are not of those who turn away. 
We are those who press forward toward the mark and obtain the promises of God in Jesus mighty name. All who agree with this prayer, give a big shout to God. Amen. I want you to believe that like, man, I want you to shout like you got it. Put a smile on your face. If you're in a Panera Bread or something, don't shout. They might have they might baker at you. So don't do that. But just just declare I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I have the favor of God. I have the blessings of God. I'm not a quitter. I won't quit. I won't give up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I promise you, you're winning. You're winning right now. Even if it doesn't feel like it, you're winning. Amen. All right, guys, I love you so much. Thanks for joining me tonight for Bible study. I appreciate you so much. Woo, we're going to have a great time this Sunday. We're going to continue our family series. We're on part four this Sunday. It's going to be awesome. Bring a friend with you. Bring a colleague, a coworker. bring your yard guy. I don't care who your pool service guy, whoever you use, bring people and let them come hear the word of God. Everybody has a family and everybody wants their family to be blessed. So come and tell them to hear the series, The Blessed Family, and learn how to have a blessed family. Amen. I love you so much. Have a great rest of your night. Have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you this Sunday at 10 a.m. Be blessed, Freedom Center. Love you guys. Bye-bye.